Copy lathes allow you to make the same shape over and over on a lathe. There seem to be lots of different designs. I based mine around the same combination of pipes and fittings I use for my slip rollers. Though this is a smaller size pipe, it's called one inch. Though I have yet to find any part of it that's actually an inch. These fittings cost two euro fifty each in our local agricultural store. So this lot cost a grand total of 30 euro. The pipe and the screws and stuff I already had, but I bet they wouldn't cost more than another 10 or so. And this is the basic assembly. Now to attach it to the lathe. And this is my lovely old lathe. I don't use it a whole lot, but um, I have an exciting project coming up and I couldn't do without it. I used two eye bolts through the bed of the lathe and just slid the pipe into them and that worked really well, very solid. Now lathes are fairly scary things. There's big lumps of wood spinning around, sharp chisels, that sort of thing. So I suggest if you want to make one of these things, make sure everything's really solid. Seriously, you don't want anything breaking or coming loose. The outer frame is rigid, but the inner ones can slide easily within it. As you can see, there's far too much slop as they are, but all I had to do was screw a wooden board onto the top and another onto the bottom, and that made all the difference. The boards hold the inner frame square. I drilled right through the set screws for the bottom one to give me maximum triangulation. I think it's not bad considering there are no bearings involved and it goes together in minutes. Now I've never used a copy lathe before at all. <laughs> and I've only ever seen them on the deli or on the YouTube. So I decided to play safe and add a limiter. This threaded bar with a nut on it holds the top bed away from the wood so it can't jump forward into it. So the cutter can't dig into the wood and break off and cause the timber to fly across the room. Releasing the wing nut gradually should ensure that the top bed and the cutter can only move forward into the wood a little at a time. <laughs> so it makes it very boring, but safely boring. Now after that it was just a matter of mounting the cutter at the correct height. I was going to use this parting tool, but I decided it was too light for what I have in mind. But I think it would be fine for smaller diameter things like chair legs or whatever. So I raided my CNC machine for this little router. It usually makes tiny delicate pieces for my guitar machines. So this could be a bit of a shock for it. This backboard is for mounting the template on. And this thing might be called a follower or might not be. <laughs> Basically it follows the template and it has to be installed in line with the cutter. I ground down the end so it's the same size as the milling bit in the router and if I wanted to use a smaller bit I'd need a smaller follower. They have to match or um, it won't copy accurately. This is an off cut of steel that has a nice simple curve. I'm using it as a test template. This is my first test, a little bit exciting. It's just a log of spruce. And it's a little too big, so I planed it down so it would fit. Here we go. If you're using a fixed blade, like a gouge or a chisel of some sort, then you want the lathe spinning fast. But if you're using a router, then that's what should be spinning fast, so the lathe can spin quite slowly. With each pass, I unwound the limiter nut a half turn, and that seemed about right. I'm taking maybe a millimeter off each time. 
I could perhaps take off more, but I'm proceeding with caution. Now, see, even this is useful. To turn a straight and parallel shape freehand is not easy. So just going back and forth without a template could come in handy sometimes. But here we are with the template kicking in. Each pass reveals a little more. Because I'm using a flat ended milling bit, it leaves a rough finish. I think a rounded one should leave a much smoother finish, I guess. Um, but a quick sanding and you can see the potential of this setup. I like it a lot. Now I made this copy lathe for a particular project. It's not just for turning firewood into bedside lamps. No, it's for something even more exciting than that. And I hope to share that with you very soon. But the thing is, YouTube aren't very good at telling people when we put a new video up. So you may never hear about it. What you have to do is click the little notification button on our page. It's shaped like a bell. Hope that works.